everyone, I'm Katie and you're watching the Texas State Aquarium's monthly program, The Current. Here on The Current, we'll be showing you behind the scenes and keeping you up to date on what we do and what we have to offer here at the Texas State Aquarium. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch every month for The Current so you don't miss out on any exciting news or events. Every year, more than 100 zoos and aquariums around the U.S. participate in an Earth Day celebration called Party for the Planet. On Saturday, April 19th, the Texas State Aquarium celebrated Party for the Planet, where children of all ages and even adults had a chance to participate in scavenger hunts, obstacle courses, and even science-based activities. The Texas State Aquarium had its grand opening of its newest exhibit, Nearshore, on Wednesday, April 9th. Construction of the new $735,000 exhibit began back in November of 2013. We really set out on this uh, journey about a year and a half ago to really look and see how can we make a great first impression on our guests. So um, one of the things that we wanted to do was one, really bring our guests into the habitat. How can we do that? We had an existing space, but how can we make this a, a new and exciting interactive experience? We have a team of great individuals, but our exhibit design team is really made up of a number of different disciplines around the aquarium. So there's animal care, there's operations, marketing, education, guest services, animal programs. And we all look at it from, from our angle and our discipline, which I think really gives a very well-rounded exhibit when it's done. We had some great existing elements. We had a skylight that was partially covered. We had a wave machine that wasn't working. We had some other, some other things in the exhibit that really worked for us, but how can we make this a better experience? And so, with the help of the exhibit design team, the exhibit architecture firm, and I can't say enough about Fulton Construction and Phil Sporchik, and we, we really tore the gallery apart and just really went down to bare bones. Took it down all the way to the, the subfloor, went up, took all the ceiling out, and just really gutted the space. And so what you'll see today when you walk in is a very open, inviting space. We really wanted to recreate the experience you might have on one of the barrier islands here in South Texas. Many of the animals in the new Nearshore exhibit were brought to the aquarium's Second Chances Wildlife Rehabilitation Program, where they are rehabilitated and deemed non-releasable. Now they serve as ambassadors to their wild counterparts. And joining me now is Sarah from our programs department with a very special creature feature, Dixie, a juvenile American alligator. Hi Sarah, thank you for joining me today. Uh, tell us a little bit more about Dixie. Hey everyone, this is Dixie. She is a juvenile American alligator. She is roughly two years old. Now, juvenile alligators will typically grow about one foot per year. So you can see Dixie is a little bit of a fast grower, just like humans. Um, animals can grow at their own rate as well. And Sarah, if one of our viewers were to come across an alligator, what should they do? Who should they contact? Um, you would definitely want to avoid it. Um, anything that you find out in the open can be definitely unpredictable, um, possibly even dangerous. Um, but you do need to remember um, we are in their natural environment as well, so don't be too surprised if you happen to run into one. Okay, thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us, and we will be right back after this message. Each year, thousands of protected, threatened, or endangered species along the Texas coast become injured or ill, most of which are problems caused directly or indirectly by humans. Our services range from simply providing a safe, temporary refuge for an exhausted migratory bird to acute medical care. When animals come in with severe injuries resulting in permanent disabilities, deeming them unreleasable, they become part of our family or we find a suitable home for them. Part of our goal is to help educate aquarium guests about the dangers these animals face and what each one of us can do to help. If you would like more information on how you can help the aquarium's mission in rehabilitating injured animals, visit our website at texasstateaquarium.org. International Migratory Bird Day is coming up on May 10th. And if you didn't already know, Corpus Christi is well known for being one of the nation's birdiest cities. So Dr. David Stelling is our resident veterinarian here at the Texas State Aquarium and is here to tell us a little bit more about the Second Chances Wildlife Rehabilitation Program and how we impact these birds' natural environment. Thank you for joining me today. My Dr. pleasure. Stelling. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the Second Chances Hospital. Uh, why was this program created? 
Well, because it is the mission of the Texas State Aquarium to inspire conservation of the Gulf of Mexico, and so we wanted to reach out beyond our walls here and uh, actually do something to help the animals out there that we're representing. And since most of the injuries that uh, animals have when they're found are related to human impacts, we try to make up for that a little bit by uh, bringing them back to health and giving them a second chance. Okay. And so how do humans impact these birds that you see? How do we impact their environment? Uh, many different ways. Uh, everything from uh, loss of habitat to pollution and to uh, things like littering. Um, a lot of the birds that we get in have been wrapped up in discarded fishing line or lures, hooks, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> we also see birds uh, that uh, have gotten caught in uh, six-pack rings or other things like that. And then uh, even uh, ducks that maybe have picked up lead shot, spent lead shot from around ponds and places like that, and then as a result are suffering lead poisoning. Uh, we also see a good number of impact injuries, birds that have either flown into windows or been hit by a car or collided with uh, something like a power line or a wind turbine. Those happen as well and we get those quite a lot. Okay. So it sounds like we as humans can do some really simple things to help protect Animals, just Absolutely. as simple as throwing away your trash or, or something. Yeah, like. uh, six pack rings obviously. Uh, when uh, you uh, maybe get a snarl on your fishing line instead of just cutting it off and throwing it over, uh, keep it with you and dispose of it properly when you get back to the shore. Okay, that sounds easy enough. Yep. Uh, so, if someone were to find one of these injured animals, what do you suggest they do? Well, they can always call us at the uh, Second Chances Wildlife Rehab Department. Our phone number there is 361-881-1210. Okay. Uh, should they not be able to reach somebody there for something urgent, then they could also call the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department or the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Selling, for joining me today. Thank you. And we will be right back after this message. When you're this close, you see things differently. When you do this, you connect. When you come to the Texas State Aquarium, you feel this way. Exotic animals are so close you can see them breathe, watch them, touch them. These are memories in the making. The AGB Splash Park is now open daily from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. on weekdays and from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on weekends. And the best part is there is no extra fee to come enjoy the Splash Park. It is all included with the price of admission to the aquarium. Just a reminder that changing rooms are available as well as lockers available for rent. We encourage guests to bring a towel, sunscreen, water shoes, and appropriate swimwear. And now let's check out a couple of upcoming events. On Saturday, May 17th, the Aquarium will celebrate Armed Forces Day by offering free admission to all active or retired military personnel. Our last homeschool science class for the spring will be on Wednesday, May 21st at Sea Lab. Each class is unique and employs hands-on discovery activities. Classes are available for grades K through 12 and are at least two hours long. For more information and reservations, please contact Randy Slayton at 361-881-1234 or visit our website at texasstateaquarium.org. Don't forget to sign up your children or grandchildren now for Sea Camp 2014. Registration is open and spaces are going fast. Please visit our website to sign up at texasstateaquarium.org. The Texas State Aquarium is offering an exciting summer camp experience for children in the Coastal Bend area. During this week of fun-filled, hands-on activities, children will connect with nature and the animals that call the Texas State Aquarium home. Sea Camp will include activities such as arts and crafts and story time for younger children, while older children engage in field experiences, go behind the scenes with animal care staff, and enjoy one overnight stay. For more details, visit our website at texasstateaquarium.org. That's all for this month on The Current. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to tune in with us next month to see what's going on at the Texas State Aquarium. For more information about the Texas State Aquarium or anything you saw in this program, you can visit our website at texasstateaquarium.org.